Hello, everybody. We are back to our differential equations. So today we will finish the normal form theorem and the construction of solutions of <coughs> linear differential equations at regular singular points, characteristic zero. So we did this already in se several steps. Today we will finish the last step. And then we have a description of a basis of solution of such equations. There remains the case when the singularity is irregular, which means that the initial form has not the same order as the original differential operator. In this case, the normal form theorem gives you only less solutions than you want. You would like to have n, where n is the order of the differential operator, n linearly independent solutions, but it will only give you as many as the initial form will give you. So I will discuss briefly how to proceed in the irregular case. Uh, so this is <coughs> classical, but uh, the original papers are very hard to read. It's a kind of the, the start of the irregular theory is with a the thesis of Fabry, somebody called Fabry from 1885. It is 102 pages, and we are not going to read all this. But I will present you a program and algorithm how to proceed, using again the normal form theorem at the end. So one does a sequence of simplifications of your differential equation until you reach at the situation where you can apply the normal form theorem. And then <clears throat> I would like to to have one look at least at characteristic P. So differential equations and characteristic P are completely different because when you derive x to the power P, it becomes 0. Huh? So uh, there is also a normal form theorem in characteristic P developed by <coughs> Florian Fjonsin, my PhD student. So I will not give you all the technical details, but I will give you some striking examples showing how different world is when you go to characteristic P. In particular, we will try to solve the, the first differential equation which comes to your mind, y prime equals y, which means finding an exponential function in characteristic P. Now, as you know, the exponential function has uh, in the denominators all the factorials, so for any prime p, you cannot just reduce it modulo p because you will get 0 in the denominators. So you have to invent something new. I will show you. So any questions from your side? Uh, everybody is here. So I hope that you look a little bit at the notes and also at the exercises. By the way, uh, the exercise session uh, on Monday will be, for the moment, suspended. But what I would like to ask you, especially Chiara and Stefan, whether they would be willing to write up some solutions of the exercises, and we will then complement them so that not only you have the exercises, but to all problems you have a written solution. So we can talk to this about this separately. Uh, this would be certainly good. So let me recall what we did last time. Uh, you, it's always the same repetition, but uh, you will apologize. We have an operator with holomorphic or formal power series coefficients. We have initial form L0 at 0, rho a local exponent. of multiplicity m. And then we take our function space. Now you are really used to this, x rho times o. And then, as we have seen, we have to allow logarithms. So z will play the role of the logarithm. And we take polynomials in z of degree less than m. And then we let l act on this. So let L underline denote the action of L on F, 
then there exists an automorphism u u from f to f such that L underline composed with U inverse is L zero underline. <coughs> now, as for the solutions associated to this lo local exponent row, we will get now of, of L y equal zero, we get U inverse x rho up to U inverse x rho log x to the power m minus 1. And then you can write this. I indicated this already. So this will be now assuming that we have, yeah, let me write it like this, or x rho h0 of x. And this h will either be in O if you have a regular singularity, or it will be in O hat otherwise in general, a formal power series. And then this continues like this. And the last one will be x rho h1, sorry, h m minus 1 x plus h m minus 2 x log x plus, and so on, going down to h0 of x log x m minus 1. So it's always a question whether you start with h1 here or h0, but I did it here for h0. Okay. So this refers just to one local exponent rho, and we have one assumption, local m, and maximal with respect to z. This was, of course, crucial. OK? So this we take for granted. I hope you remember a little bit what was the idea of proof. Uh, so the main, the main step, maybe I can write this here. The main trick, or main step, even though it looks very simple, is to show that L0, when you apply it to this f, then that this is just x times f. So x rho plus 1, O, z, degree less than n. You have seen this because we did it several times. Now, what about the situation where this is not maximal. So <clears throat> what I will do, I will give you first an example, and then I give you a new proposal for f, for our function space. But this proposal will not work. But I do it in order to show you that it is not so easy or not obvious how to, to find a suitable space. And the precise condition you need is, again, this condition here. Okay. So whenever you have another local exponent, I call it sigma, with rho minus sigma, a positive integer, then this rho, if you try to solve now for x sigma, this rho will kind of destroy here this equality. If you just use the naive function space, it will kind of shoot in this space here and create a hole here, a gap. So let me explain this to you. So I think we start with the following example. All this, of course, the examples are very simple. But uh, I mean, they already show what's going on. We take an Euler operator, L0, x 
square del square minus x del. So this is Euler of shift 0. Chi of t is t times t minus 2. And we get sigma equals 0, rho equals 2, the local exponents. of multiplicities m sigma equals m rho equals 1. OK. So forget about the rho for the moment and just think of sigma. We want to do the same business as here, replacing rho by sigma. So what we would like to consider, take uh, as a test, this is not the final answer, the same space as before, f equals x sigma o z less than m. Sorry, this is a sigma here. This is a sigma the problem is here if I erase then I cannot write on it because now it works m sigma as your function space let us see what l0 does on this space now here sigma is 0 and m sigma is 1, so we just get, we get no z, we get no logarithm. This is just O. Yeah? So this would be, if we call, either a convergent power series or formal power series. OK? So what does L0 do here? We don't have to extend L0 to L underline because we have no logarithm. So L0 underline is L0. And we just apply it, and we get L0 of f is L0 of O. Now, the constant here goes to 0. So we start with Cx, vector space over C generated by x. We don't get x squared because t equals 2, so rho equals 2 will be a 0 of chi of t. So we get a gap here. So uh, let me write here gap. And then we get everything starting at x cubed, so we get O x cubed. No? Any power series of order at least 3. OK. Now this is strictly contained in xf which is just x times o. These are the power series without constant term. So the gap at x square. Now, we have two options. If we are lucky and our tail, t, if we now take l, remember, we have written this as l0 minus t. If by chance t maps this space inside the image of L0, then we would be done. But in general, this will not be the case. For instance, take L equals L0 minus T equal. So what do I take? L0, just to simplify, uh, plus x square del. Then T is minus, I don't, I forget about the. So then x square del of x, which is, of course, an element of f, will be x square. And this is not in the image of L0, L0 of f equal L0 of o. So we have a problem, OK? And this shows that. Uh, the problem actually occurs. It's not an artificial problem. It's really there. OK. So I think I keep my example, but I can erase this one because you remember all this.
By the way, you, you should notice that we <coughs> there's very little analysis up to now. I mean, uh, all manipulations are algebraic. Yeah? So there will be a little bit more analysis later on. And as for number theory, you still have to wait a little bit, but it will also show up. So let me give us now a, <coughs> an escape strategy. What can we do? So answer or attempt of answer. Attempt number one. So of course the, the philosophy is modify modify your space F. Modify suitably F. So by the way, recall that F plays a crucial role here because it is a space where we are searching our solutions. Yeah? So of course, it depends what kind of solutions we want. But at least we want to find all solutions in this space. So. One idea would be, OK, we have a gap. So let's add a logarithm yeah. by adding logarithms, which means introducing a variable set. By introducing a variable z. Now, of course, there are several options. Uh, let me let me try. Let us try a new f equal o plus o z. This is even a direct sum. So, recall the multiplicities here are one. So. Introducing very high powers of z doesn't seem to be reasonable. Okay, so let us take this guy here uh, with the usual del bar of z one over x as usual, and let's check again if this works out. No? This is our first candidate, and as I already told you, it won't work out. But we want to see it. So <clears throat> what is L0 underline? Then L0 underline of f equal L0 O direct sum OZ, polynomials of degree at most 1 in Z. So this is just L0 of O plus L underline O Z. Okay, it could be there could be some mixing, but so I just write the sum. And recall that our initial polynomial, we take again the same L0 as before. Chi of t was t t minus two, which is two, which is <coughs> t square minus two t, and we will also need for the action of L0 underline on Z, we need also the derivative, which is 2 times t minus 1. OK. Now, let us look what <coughs> we have again, L0 x square del square minus x del, very simple operator. And we know already how it acts on Z. We had this lemma from last time, or I don't know when, L0 x k z. This is the only thing we need to know because we don't have any higher powers of z. So this was, now we have shift is 0, so the x k remains the same. And we get chi of k x k pa -pa -pum, times z plus and now we have to derive with respect to z, but we also have to derive here chi prime of k x k. And the z disappears, z to the power 0. Okay, So you can factor here if you want x k chi k z plus chi prime k. 
OK? So what does this give you? We just take now k some integers, eg. Then let us take k equals 0. Where do we go with k is 0? L0 of z will be now k0 high of 0 is 0. And high prime of 0, we have it here, is minus 2. So we get uh, minus 2 in C. Okay. We don't get any x, and we don't get any z. So this, the minus 2 <coughs> uh, lies in f, but it does not lie in xf. Yeah? And minus 2 not in x times f, which would be our candidate for the image. Yeah? You remember, we want the image to be x times our function space. So this is already, we are stuck here, but I give you some more uh, formulas. If you take L0 x times z, then you get minus xz. So this here, this would be OK, because we are in x times this one. Yeah? And for k equals 2, it's also OK, L0 x squared z up to error, computational errors. This will be 0 plus 2x squared. So this is in x times f. This is in x times f. And finally, for k equals 3, l0 x cubed z is 3x squared z. You correct me if I make an error, plus 4x cubed. And this is again in xf. So the the problem occurs already in the first step. Here we have a, a problem. So we cannot really control the image of L0 as we want. Okay. So I have to admit that there is a small cheating. Attempt number two. I think I erase now this one here. <clears throat> the cheat, it's not the cheating, but it is kind of a privileged situation because when you don't know how to continue or how to define your function space, you you go to the original papers of Fuchs and Frobenius, and you try to find there an indication what could be the correct space. And it will be there. Of course, I found it there. The problem is it is very hidden. The notation is uh, not a mess, but complicated. And it took me quite a while to extract the precise information how you define a function space f which does work, and this will be attempt number two. I, I would invite you to go to the original papers. First, it's nice to read, and it gives you a, a good impression how people uh, were thinking at that time. And uh, it also shows you how now this presentation here tells you clearly what are the obstacles and what are the tricks. Okay, So I hope that this helps a little bit to get a better understanding. So the, the attempt number two is to take a more, more sophisticated function space. So <clears throat> introduce f as a space of functions involving different powers of logarithms for each local exponent. And in my example, 
I just have two local exponents and we have resonance. So in case of resonance, and this, recall, this means that rho minus sigma in n positive. Okay, we have two exponents which differ by an integer. When I saw this condition, uh, I think two or three years ago, when I started to read these papers, I had no feeling and understanding why this is so crucial here, why this gives extra problems. But after, afterwards, it is just this condition here that you want the Euler operator, the initial form of your operator, to have a very precise image. So now I will write it down. Take, I'm not sure if we would have guessed it on our own. So we have sigma, sigma was zero, and we had rho, which was two. Huh? And m sigma, m sigma is one, and m rho is also one. Okay? So what do we take now? The smaller one, the sigma, is harmless because it has no, no smaller one, yeah? whereas the rho has a brother which is smaller and has an integer difference. So when you, when you apply, as we saw here, if you apply L0 to x sigma, yeah, the, you also have to apply it to x rho, and this will create a gap. So here you just take O, which is x0 O, yeah, which is O. And then here you take x square O. And uh, now you add z here. You would also add a z here if the multiplicity of sigma would be larger. I will indicate it in a moment. So here you take now less than m sigma plus m rho. And here, to complete, you just take less than m sigma. And as m sigma is 1, z does not appear. So this will be O plus x square O. Now here, m sigma plus m rho is 2. So you get this one plus x square O z. OK. Miracle. Miracle. So the, the thing here is to take the sum here, the so polynomials in Z in the logarithm of the sum of the multiplicities. And now this enlargement here to going in the second component, this corresponds to x rho here, no? going further in the power of logarithm will ensure that the gap created by x rho here will be closed by deriving z. So I will prove this in this example. OK. Where do I have my cap? Here. Now, and of course, from this here, you can already guess how, how the general formula for the function space looks like. But let us do it in this example. OK, you are still here. Let me just check a moment. So let us now compute L0 underline applied to f. Let us compute L0 underline of f. And our hope is, hopefully, x times f. This would be fantastic, because then we know that the t, the tail of our general differential operator, it will always end up in xf, because t has shift larger than 0. Okay. So let us, we can do it 
here component wise. So, <clears throat> of course, these two here, this sum is just O. The x square is eaten by O. So we have to compute L0 underline of O. This we know already, this is L0 of O. And this was Cx plus O x cubed as before, as before. And now the interesting part is L0 underline of x square O. Sorry, this should be. This should be linear in z. Okay. So we just take a monomial because everything is linear. So L0 underline of xkz. I think I take xkz, yes. Now you see the formulas are very useful. This is chi of k xkz plus chi prime of k xk as before. And now k will be, where do I have it? k will start at 2. k equals 2. k equals 2, this will be chi of 2 is 0. Chi prime of 2 is non-zero because it's a simple root. So we get x square. So L0 x square z is x square. Ah, this will close the gap here. When we get in the image, we get our x square. Now k equals 3. Chi of 3 is non-zero, as is chi prime. Non-zero, so L0 x cube z will be, I hope I computed it, 3 x cubed z bum, 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 plus 4 x cubed. It's the same as before. Now this here, where do we have our space? x cube z will lie in x times the sum and here, so this is okay. And x cube, of course, lies also in x times. So this is okay. So this is in xs. This is also in xs. Okay. So we need both. We need the inclusion, and then we need that everything occurs. k equals 4, the last one. We get, as before, chi of 4 different 0, chi prime of 4 different 0, and L0 x 4 z equal to 8 x 4 z plus 6 x 4. I hope I did not make any mistakes. Again, in x s. And now this implies. Therefore, let us now look at the image L0 of f, which is L0 underline O plus x square O z. Okay. So we get C x plus O x cubed plus C x square from this one here and x cubed O z. So now we can factor x and we get, <coughs> here we get O plus x square OZ, which is xs. How do you do this? We are happy. Okay? So of course, this is pure combinatorics. I mean, except of this formula, everything is, is on the table. But the trick is, of course, to find the correct function space. Any questions so far? Are you, are you still following? <clears throat> so let me now 
formulate this statement as a lemma. And then uh, I will rephrase again the normal form theorem. So now I erase everything. <coughs> Now, <clears throat> so you, at the moment, you don't get new results with this, because this has been proven 150 years ago. But you get a new understanding what is behind. And this, of course, may help you, for instance, to study characteristic p or to study differential equations in several variables or other problems. OK, so let me write, you the, let me write down the lemma. And the proof is the same as in the example, L0 in O del Euler operator of shift zero as always. Now let omega in C be a set of local exponents uh, with integer differences. So this will be complex numbers, but as the differences are integers, we can order them ordered increasingly. Row 1 less than row 2 up to row k. Row i plus 1 minus row i in n positive of multiplicities. mi at least 1. Okay. In this situation, we define our function space set, capital F. So you start with the first one, x row 1, O, O always power series converted to formal. <clears throat> so for the first one, you just take polynomials in z of degree less than m1 plus x o 2 o z and now you go up to m1 plus m2 plus and so on and you do this up to the very end x o k o z and now you have to add all of them that's an m1 plus m2 plus m k this is an object of desire, quoting Bunuel. And uh, then L0 underline of this f is x times f. And I think you believe it. In any case, I'm not going to prove it here. It will appear in the notes. Proof. Use the lemmata, in particular the one I just quoted before, plus induction on the degree in z. So <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to do it here. It's a little bit of writing. See the notes. Do you believe it? Uh, once you guess the correct one, you are happy. You can think about what to do in characteristic p. This space does not work in characteristic p. So you still have to find a more sophisticated space. So you also see here that you will lo get logarithms of quite high degree. You know, if you have many local exponents, then this could be quite involved. So what's the time? Yeah. So. Ba, ba, bum. 
Maybe I make <clears throat> one more example, which is similar to the one or remark. Remark plus example. And then we make a short break. So now you see here, here we will have now polynomials already in the first summit of a degree less than m1. m1 could be 10,000 if you want. No? So if you just apply L0 to this first summit, x rho 1, O, z less than m1, then here, here in this O, you could take as element, you could take x to rho 2 minus rho 1. Can you read it? Yeah, I hope it's a little bit small. Rho 2 minus rho 1, which is an integer. This lives in the, with the monomial in O. And if you multiply it, you will get here x rho 2. Now, rho 2 is a root of the initial polynomial, so you will get a gap. Yeah? We'll have a gap. The image of this one will have at x rho 2 z i for i less than m1. Okay. And also, no, of course, it will have a gap again at x rho 3. Similar. x rho 3 z i up to x rho k z i. So the other summons, and especially the higher logarithms of, of the higher powers of z, will close these gaps. So the higher powers of z in the remaining summons will close these gaps. So it's, it's very smart and tricky. Okay? And it's not very hard to prove, but let's believe it here. OK. So I think I will still write down the theorem and then make the break so we have all this together. So this is now the final version of the normal form theorem. Theorem NFT. So we keep the situation from before. <coughs> Let L in O del have initial form L0 as in lemma. So with all these local exponents, and let f as before, let f be as before. And then now it depends if you have a regular singularity or not. But let's do the, then in case 0 is a regular singularity of L, there exists u from f to f, as always, linear automorphism. Now, I, we are here now in the convergent setting, such that L underline u inverse equals L0 underline on f. OK? And if you don't have a regular singularity, then it's only for formal power series, but I don't write this down. And the corollary is, now here I have taken a set of local exponents differing, where the local exponents differ by integers. I have to do this for all these sets. Now, uh, if you sum up 
all multiplicities, as you have a regular singularity, you will get precisely n solutions, though so, uh, varying over all such omegas produces, as always, a basis of n solutions, n convergent solutions of L, can you still read this, Ly equals 0. So we are happy, no? So it took a while to arrive here, but of course we could have started directly with this, but I, I think it was worth to motivate a little bit how these function spaces are defined. Very good. So let's make a short break and we continue in five. Okay. We continue at least a little bit. So now let us go to the case of irregular singularities. So the, the normal form theorem still holds, replacing convergent power series by formal ones, but we get less solutions as we want because the order of L0 will be smaller than the order of L, and we only get as many solutions as L0 has. So we are missing some solutions. Now, these further solutions should still exist somewhere, and uh, of course you want to find them in a space which is reasonable, and again, uh, this is classical, so let me write this down now. Irregular singularities so this means that the order of L zero, which is of course we have again L in O well, a differential operator is now strictly smaller than the order of L, which was n. Okay. <clears throat> Hence, the normal form theorem will only give us, let me call this maybe n0, give us n0 formal solutions. And of course, when I write n0, I mean linearly independent. No? C linearly independent. So where are the other ones? Where are the other ones? Maybe they don't even exist. So what you can do now is, at least to get an idea, you can look outside zero. Outside zero, you will have uh, no singularity, so you can apply the theorem of cauchy kovalevskaya to get a basis of solution, and then you try to extend these solutions approaching zero. Okay, so that's kind of analytic continuation along it. Mostly you do it in sectors. And then you can look whether you get a reasonable limit and how it could look like. So I'm not going to do this here. I will just give you uh, the, the result. And then I show you how you prove this result with our methods. OK? So <clears throat> there's this thesis of Fabry. Fabry from 1885, 102 pages in French. And of course, it reappears in other papers. But actually, I have not found a paper where a complete proof is given of his result. And I did not read Fabry's paper in detail, of course. Uh, so the answer is, a basis of 
let me call them formal solutions, will involve, so we have again h of x uh, now in O hat, a formal power series as we had before. Then we will have a factor x rho, rho in C, a monomial, a generalized monomial. Then we will have powers of log x, i, powers uh, probably of bounded degree. But then we get one more ingredient, and that's the interesting part. We get an exponential function, a factor in our solution, so exp of a polynomial, P, capital P. So P will be in C, I think I write x here, a polynomial. But you evaluate this polynomial not in x, but in 1 over x to a certain power, 1 over x q. And q will be uh, a rational number. And it will be positive. And our solutions will be products and linear combinations of such functions. So you see here, the simplest example would be E1 over x with essential singularity. In zero, OK? This can appear. By the way, you are invited to find the a differential equation for e to the 1 over x. Now, so y of x will be exp. Now, this one is fading out. Let's see if I have a better one. Exp of p 1 over x q times x rho times h of x times log x some power i. Okay. So this part here, this is already a standard. We are familiar with this. We know this, or we, we are used to this. And here, if you write this as e, now you have here sum. I write it maybe like this. c1 x to the minus r1 plus c, where do I want to go? I think I use again k, ck x to the minus rk huh? well, <coughs> times x rho h of x log x i. So I claim that this will be with r i positive r i in q. This will be the general shape here. And indeed, if you have a, a polynomial in 1 over x to the q, q will be a common exponent for all denominators. Yeah? So you could write r1 up to r k as <clears throat> so ri, we could write it as ri tilde over the same q and ri tilde in n. Okay. Now, why do we only have to take here positive ri? Because if we, uh, of course, this is the product here. This is the product e ci x to the minus ri, i from 1 to k. Okay. So 
if Ri would be negative, minus Ri would be positive, and this would be just a convergent function and would be put into, into the formal power series here. So this is Ri less than zero would give a power series vector. Okay. So we can assume that it looks like this. Now, this is what we know by Fabry's theorem. And uh, there are various ways to determine this. I want to present you uh, a procedure which was developed by my student, uh, Nikki Merkel. He did his master thesis on this. So what he proposed is an algorithm to determine these exponents Ri and Ci. Algorithm to determine from L, from our differential operator L, all Ci and Ri. The CI are complex numbers. I should write this somewhere. CI in C. Okay. <clears throat> now, as you have this product here, and as it is a finite product, actually it suffices to find the first one. Suffices to find R1, the largest one, and C1. Once you have found R1 and C1, then multiply your solution. Or well, not your solution, but multiply Y. Multiply Y in Ly equals 0 with this factor with E Ci x to the minus Ri and get a new, this you have to prove, differential equation L tilde Y and as you will show, this first sum and will have disappeared, and the solutions now will be exponential functions in a polynomial of smaller degree with p tilde of smaller degree. The degree here is a rational number. Okay. So uh, it depends how you know it is the supremum of this ri tilde, the maximum. So. Then you can apply induction to eliminate one after the other by induction. And we could iteratively, if we do this k times, we eliminate the exponential functions. We eliminate x of p of 1 over x to the power q. And we get a differential equation, which will have, as you show, have a regular singularity at 0. <clears throat> I will indicate you in a moment how you find R and R1 and C1. Of course, I, here I only describe the algorithm and I don't prove that it works. Yeah? So, end up with a differential equation L tilde k, that we call it like this, after k steps, y equals 0, and show 
that it has a regular singularity at zero. Now, this procedure here, you do it for every row. Do this for every row, local exponent. So of course, if you want to carry out this algorithm in practice, it's very uh, tiring and tedious, but principally it works. No? And to this one, apply here NFT to get, essentially, you get now a term like this, yeah, because we already know that the solutions are like this, to get the respective solutions. And then you just have to pull them back through the whole algorithm. Pull these back through the whole algorithm. to get, for this row, solutions of the original equations. Solutions of Ly equals 0. And you prove that if you do, if you start with all rows, you will get precisely the number of solutions you want. Uh, then prove that you get varying row precisely and linearly independent solutions of Ly equals 0. So once you know how the algorithm works, the proofs are computational, sometimes a bit lengthy, but not very complicated. So how do you find your ri here? So the exponents ri, or yeah, you, you just find the first one, can be found. So classically, one uses the Newton polygon through the slopes of the Newton polygon of L. So this is something which looks like this. So it is a, a convex polytope unbounded in N2 given by the <coughs> degrees of derivation and the degree of x in the differential operator. And here you have the compact faces, and here you have the slopes. And these slopes are rational numbers, and they are precisely the ri which appear here. That's not the way how Nicolas Merkel proceeds. Or, and this seems to be more elegant and efficient, or through a rewriting of L in terms of operators. So maybe I, I have to make here a small comment. Classically, to define the initial form of L, we developed according to powers of del, of the derivative. But if you look at it carefully, to find the initial form of L, what you do, you write your operator as a linear combination of x times del. Taking x times del and some coefficient in front of it, 
it suffices to evaluate these coefficients at zero, and then you get immediately the initial polynomial. Okay? So here, you do it with weights in terms of operators xr del, sorry, xr, x del, x times. So you need a shift here, del. So you could write this better x del, and this is xr, I denoted this by delta. So you write L as some pi x, x. Now r is rational, but you don't care. x r plus 1 del to the power i. The pi will now be meromorphic in quad O. Everything is formal, but I don't write it. And then you get L0. And now this corresponds to R by just putting x equals 0, some pi 0. And uh, x r plus 1 del to the i. And now <clears throat> I have not specified the r yet. When you look at this, uh, whenever there appears just one summand, r is not interesting. But whenever there appear two summands, which correspond essentially to these two here uh, lattice points, then you keep the r. Yeah? So then you get and you take the largest one. Okay. <clears throat> when sum is not a monomial, take r, a rational number. Okay, you have to work this out. I don't have an example at hand. I, I don't want to do it because it's, it's mostly computational. But there's a precise way to define r. And once you have r, you can also define, you can also find the c1 or the ci. And this is then what Nikki calls a generalized local exponent, because from here, from this representation with respect to r, you get a modification of the initial polynomial depending now on r. And the roots of this generalized initial polynomial will give you precisely the C1 up to CK. So you have complete control over all this, and then you go ahead. Okay. So this is just a sketch. I'm not sure if, you, if we should do this here in class. I would like to put a little bit more details in the notes, but not enter here uh, with too much machinery and computations. Just remind that for for irregular singularities, you have to take care of these exponential functions, ex exponential factors. There's an algorithm to compute them, and then you apply the normal form theorem again. Okay. So <clears throat> that's the irregular case, and we are approaching now characteristic p. So it is a quarter past six, so I'm not sure if I still want to start with characteristic p. So maybe I just give you, I just give you an appetizer for characteristic p, which in some sense is more exciting or more unusual. I'm happy, I'm happy to talk about differential equations in characteristic p several times. So it would be helpful if I get feedback from your side by email if you are interested in the characteristic p case, or if I should just skip it and pass on to number theoretic uh, problems and to the algebraicity of solutions. So let me just put this down, differential equations. in positive characteristic. Yes. 
And there is not, not too much, I mean, differential equations in positive characteristics have been looked at many times, but for us, there are essentially two significant papers by Honda and by Dwork. Uh, at least which are relevant what we want to do. So <clears throat> uh, maybe I just give you a few remarks and then we stop. So now, of course, xp prime, p is a characteristic, will be 0, Okay, as will be the case with any multiple. So we get many more constants. So <clears throat> if you take now, uh, let me take k is a field of characteristic p positive, then we can take, now we can only talk about formal power series. And inside we have k power series in x to the p. And this is the ring of constants. with respect to del. Yeah. The elements inside the power series rings which are going to 0. And of course, you can take the quotient field. If you want to talk about fields, and you get Laurent series, formal Laurent series. And now you have here, this is a field of constant. So already your concept of basis changes dramatically. Now, in characteristic 0, characteristic 0, x inverse has no primitive in k, let's take even power series, OK? And we overcame this by introducing introduced logarithms. But in characteristic P, <clears throat> something else happens. Of course, xp minus 1 and xmp minus 1 have no primitives. Because, uh, yeah, easy. Now you could say, OK, this is nothing else than a constant times x minus 1, and here x mp times x minus 1. And this is, let me call this here c, script c for the field of constants. So in up to the multiplication with constant, this is the same. But now if you introduce the logarithm, uh, you just formally, you don't have a logarithm as a function. Let z be a variable with, now we extend again, del bar of z 1 over x. Yeah. We don't mind to not to know what that is. Then in the algorithm, in the NFT algorithm, powers of z will appear, and we will have to find we will have to find primitives of these powers. primitives of z to the i will be required. The integration operator was named L, was named S. Now, in characteristic 0, there is no problem to have here primitives. But in characteristic p, Whenever a z p minus 1 occurs, p 
poses a problem. And as well, of course, that mp minus 1. It's the same problem as before, but now for the variable z. So now, to overcome this, introduce a new variable. I call it for the moment v with v prime del bar v. Del underline is the extension. Now, here, it's a matter of taste what you take. You want to take 1 over z, but it turns out that it's better to take 1 over x times 1 over z. Okay, And then this will give you a primitive also of z p minus 1. But then for v, the same problem occurs. So you have to introduce infinitely many variables. So homework, if you want, so if y prime equals y in characteristic three. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye bye. Thanks. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.